Good morning, YouTube. I uh, wanted to put a video out today discussing a little bit of the um, very, very light sparring that Joe and his friend did yesterday. My friend, too, uh, Diego. Um, Diego's really just starting out. He already knew some stuff. Decent for good foundation. Uh, I, I move folks very slow. We don't go through nothing quickly. Uh, we're not an assembly line. Uh, we, we, we're different. <laughs> I'll put it to you that way. But uh, we're not all-knowing boxing gods. Uh, there are no all-knowing boxing gods, by the way. Uh, if, if there were, uh, they are spending their time in heaven with the Lord and not hanging out here with us. So... want to talk about something because when you see something it might not be necessarily be what you need to do and uh, I told Joe I said at some point in there I said now all the bobbing and the weaving and uh, the one twos that Diego was giving Joe uh, I asked for every bit of that uh, the idea was to see what Diego would do and how quick he could get, how fast and harder in his punches he would get, is his confidence bill. And I was very pleased with him. And with Joe, I had him moving, bobbing and weaving, just get out of the way of punches. Uh, one thing we do know with Joe, uh, not unlike some great great fighters uh, but we need to work on uh, uh, he he don't he don't know how to fight going backwards and that's not in what we do but there again you you need to learn how to do that and the other thing I want not that he was fighting yesterday see the deal was him just moving the the other kid try to hit him uh, we're going to have a lot of sparring footage come up uh, a, a lot uh, I don't mind showing a lot of that really I don't mind showing the mistakes but when it gets on very good or greatness I don't like to show that boxing used to be the most secretive sport uh, known to man it's not any longer. Uh, everybody wants to get in front of a camera and be a hot shot. But, uh, and that's good, and we need that because it's good for the promotion of the sport and, and for fighters. But uh, uh, think how I want to say this. That's best left to fancy bag work and rope work. Uh, you don't want to show all your cards or show what you're doing. Uh, you just don't. Uh, another thing I want to tell you, amateur boxers. Joe didn't really know how to, and Joe leans forward a lot. And uh, I wanted, that's by design too, but he's leaning forward a little too much. I want him a little more erect as he's bullying forward. Uh, uh, you go back and you look at some of the heaviest hitters in the sport and they do that. But uh, And you know who they are, Mike Tyson, uh, to name one. But uh, we're trying to get a, a mix here. I want Joe to use his hands to get a guy in the corner use his hands and going lower to back a guy up at the same time 
and uh, Lord knows He's done it and can do it. Uh, but of course, yesterday He 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 was instructed, "Don't you hit this this kid." And you shouldn't be if you're 180, 90 pounds. You got no business hitting 120 pound kid. Uh, you can love to tap them. You can hit them a little harder to see what they got or to toughen them up. But uh, just certain lines you don't cross with me. I don't know how everybody, everybody else you do it, do as you please. All right. The uh, leading with your head, and that's going to get you in trouble in amateur boxing today. Uh, you come in the least little bit crouched, and boy, you're, going, you're not going to hear the end of it. Uh, <laughs> Not going to hear the end of it. So I can't change that. So I suggest to you young guys, uh, be very careful So with that. All right. Uh, first thing I do if I'm working with somebody is build punching strength. Now, we do other things, of course, but... Uh, punching strength can be built upon and can be made great in everybody. Let me say that again. Punching strength can be built and made great in any fighter. Punching strength can be made and built to make into great in any fighter. And I probably said that three different ways. It takes time and you got to work at it. You got to get your thing correct, but you can build your punching power. Now, where's the greatness coming? Are you going to be punching as hard as uh, Ernie Shavers? Probably not if, if you weren't born with that type of mind, body, strength. Uh, but it will be greatness compared to where you were when you started working on it. And it will be tremendous greatness. And that can be achieved by any kid. Uh, all right. All that going around the block 20 times to say two things. Finished. Uh, I'm going to the second thing. Uh, there's been a lot of bad things going around uh, on the internet about Custy Amato, about Teddy Atlas, about Muhammad Ali, and about several others that is really not good. Now, you know me. I got on... Uh, you go back and you look at my videos, I am vicious on the ugliness part of Ali that rarely gets looked at. Uh, I'm not even going to mention what they've said about any of these guys uh, because I'm not going to echo uh, that sort of feel in this sport. Not gonna do it. All right. I would have no problem. Uh, no, I won't go there. Not gonna go there. Uh, we need to, as folks that are online, that are in the boxing community worldwide when we see this stuff we we need to literally go on the attack and set it straight push it and snuff it out and be done with it uh, and that's um, all I'm going to say on those aspects um, now uh, another thing uh, 
that was I can't even mention what was said about Muhammad Ali and I'm not going to it was grotesque and I don't like it and it was not true uh, where this sick filth comes from I don't know uh, so I can't even address the Muhammad Ali thing I don't even want to I don't want to give no credence to even put a seed in somebody's mind about this man uh, with trash like that. So I'm going to go a little, couple of little places with Custy Amato and, uh, and Teddy Atlas. And uh, we'll talk about Kevin Rooney a little bit probably in this too. Um, and these are things I can mention that have been said. Teddy Atlas was mentioned as a fraud in the Muhammad Ali sick, twisted, psychopathic, mentally ill person's breath about him, he got on Teddy Atlas. And these things were said about all three of these guys, all four of them really, uh, trashy, sick things. But I'll talk to you about what I feel I can mention. And, uh, what was mentioned was that Teddy Atlas was a fake and a phone. Michael Moore's words, whom Teddy Atlas did train, was mentioned uh, because Michael Moore, uh, whom I'm not going to be ugly about or to, but uh, he's not sane, as all I'll say, when, when he said this. Uh, he said, I love Teddy Atlas. Now, this is the former uh, former world heavyweight champion that Teddy Atlas trained, Michael Moore. And Michael Moore said to the effect, and I'm paraphrasing, I love Teddy Atlas, but Teddy ain't worth the shit as a trainer. Uh, he don't know nothing. Uh, but he pepped me up. He psychologically helped me. All right, I would ask everybody to go watch the round preceding George Foreman knocking Michael Moore out, and they go to Michael Moore's corner when that round ends, and Teddy Atlas tells him exactly what George Foreman is going to do to him in that next round which was the round that Michael Moore gets knocked out in. He tells Michael Moore exactly what uh, George Foreman is going to do to him and tells Michael Moore exactly what to do that that does not happen. And Michael Moore chooses to not listen to Teddy Atlas and goes right out there and does what Teddy Atlas says do not do. Uh, and George Foreman does exactly what Teddy Atlas says that George Foreman is going to do and knocks him out. You, you can see that. You, you get to see it with your own eyes. You get to hear everything that was said with your own ears. And uh, so that, and there's hundreds of other pieces of information you can look at. Teddy Atlas, a great trainer, still is a great trainer. Uh, I'd have him in my corner in a second. Uh, a lot of mentioning that. Uh, now let's go on to Kevin Rooney. Uh, nothing really ugly was said about Kevin Rooney, but I remind everyone that uh, everyone knows how this worked. There was no secret in the command structure in Diamato's camps. A lot of secret, secret things that they didn't want people to see that they did, but uh, those were strategical secrets. But the order and the operation in which things went, we have plenty of uh, film to prove. Uh, the mastermind was the old man, Diamato, uh, and from 
before Floyd Patterson all the way up through to Custody Amato's death. He was the mastermind. Uh, Teddy Atlas was the implementer for Custody Amato. Uh, Teddy Atlas has admitted as much his whole life. Uh, there was a riff and a bang with Teddy Atlas and Mike Tyson. Uh, Teddy Atlas did the manly thing, uh, made a stand. Uh, Mike Tyson's lucky to be alive, that's all I got to say. And we're Mike Tyson fans in, uh, in this house. He's lucky to be alive. He's lucky Teddy Atlas did not kill him. Uh, so Teddy Atlas left and had world champions uh, on his own. Um, Kevin Rooney was promoted up. Now, who trained uh, Kevin Rooney under the tutelage of Custy Amato? That was, that was Teddy Atlas as well. So these guys were learning from one another under the tutelage of Custy Amato. Uh, even going way back before Atlas or Kevin Rooney uh, with Floyd Patterson. Now this is another thing I want to mention. Uh, and you can, you can see good trainers, a good trainer's got to have control, number one. And you can see when uh, Mike Tyson left and or fired Kevin Rooney, that career just went down in the dumps. And, and it didn't fade, it just went. Uh, so that's a testament to the guys that were training uh, Mike Tyson. And going all the way back to Floyd Patterson, there was some head banging towards, towards the end, not at the end, but towards the end uh, of D'Amato and Floyd Patterson. But make no mistake about it. Uh, D'Amato was the head trainer, the head honcho in charge, the brains of that. And I forget the gentleman's name that would have been the Teddy Atlas of that day or the Kevin Rooney of that day. Uh, uh, I just forgot this guy's name. But uh, he was just such. And uh, there's been a lot of talk, and I believe the talk, I believe it, of Floyd saying that uh, D'Amato did not train him, it was the other guy. And that would be like Mike Tyson saying, uh, D'Amato never trained me, Atlas did. Or D'Amato never trained me, Atlas never trained me, Kevin Rooney did. And it's just not true. It's just not true. And, uh, those are the lightweight things that I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, with concerns to Joe, we're going to have a lot more sparring coming up. Uh, if there's flashes of greatness, you may not see it, but mistakes and things we need to work on more undoubtedly, you'll be seeing those things. Uh, we've got where we are right now, we've got to what I'm being told now, I won't know till I'm there. Uh, two places. One of the places is more with older teenagers than Joe, uh, so he will not be able to cut loose fully with these guys. Uh, but the 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 other place, uh, so there's some big strong men in there. Uh, they go wide open and we'll be able to get more of a, a logist of really what Joe has. And we're in a growth process. There's no hurry in here. We're not uh, uh, going up for a state championship here. And they don't want Joe to go up for a state championship here. Uh, this is a hell of a crazy place. There's so much... Uh, envy and pride and selfishness uh, with these leagues that they have in these states here that as soon as they look at Joe they're like no no we 
there's nothing we can do with him. He's too aggressive. And I'm like, oh my gosh, come on. Uh, so those are the things that, that we deal with. And, you know, I've made some boisterous videos in the past about how it is where, everywhere we've been. So, uh, but I like this kid that's come on with us. We've got a couple more that are coming on. Uh, I'm working with these kids free. Uh, not a rich man, I'm a rather poor man, but uh, I, li I like working with these young guys. There's nothing like seeing a kid uh, as they're developing into a man. It's nothing like seeing a kid that's lacking confidence that then two or three weeks to two or three months, you're looking at a different kid and he's got a lot of confidence knows who he is, carries himself in a new way because he's a new a new guy. And I love that. I love that. That's my that's a big blessing to me. So uh, we're gonna keep moving forward. You know we've had a lot of setbacks and all this moving and uh, really uh, we were not training very adequately where we were living before for I guess we were there for five months, four months. And uh, so we're getting back into a full, really good groove here. Uh, and like I said, we're not rushing anything. Joe's 14 years old. We've got time. There's no need to force and rush it, a, a young man. Uh, now, there's times when you, when you, do want to force and rush, and the kid will let you know, hey, I want to get in that tournament over there, and I'm going to win it. Kid, we got some work to do, and we got little time. Let's get to it. Uh, so the fuss and rush uh, happens all the time. It's not a bad thing, and uh, it's a good thing in most cases because you got a kid that's wanting to wanting to uh, win, win a trophy, win a belt, win uh, uh, the Golden Glove necklace, win the certificate, uh, and all the other things that come along with this. And uh, kudos to those boys. Uh, here we're just in, this is a significant different problem. So, um, you guys know that watch this channel, you know, Joe's had the law called on him for being too aggressive in sparring. And, uh, boy, this is a different world up in around here. But uh, we're in another area, so hopefully, uh, well, irrespective of what area we've been in, it's been the same mess. But hopefully here it'll be a little bit different. So we'll see what happens. Uh I don't know, you know, Joe has dual citizenship. I'm just a resident here for the time being. <laughs> I've been in the process of renewing that. Never know what can happen, but uh, may see about taking Joe up to Miami. I don't know how uh, to get him, uh, not to Miami, to New York. And I don't know what New, New York is going to ask for from Joe uh, to be able to do some competing there. But this, we're thinking. We're thinking in this. So uh, this will be a little later. Uh, but I need to get him somewhere and need to get the folks that need to, need to see the specialness that I see every day that's right in front of me, not on a video. Uh to, I need some others to see and to tell us, hey, this is this and this is that. And so we'll keep pushing along. Uh, as far as the kids in the neighborhood here, Joe has uh, established his authority 
uh, over the hellions that run around. So in a new neighborhood, uh, Joe's established the authority, and I'm very proud of him for that. I don't want him out here street fighting, but uh, he's let the proper kids know uh, the bullying stops, being crazy as hell to adults that can't hit you back stopped and done. Security guards out here, of course, we're in a gated community, and uh, their line is they can't really do nothing to the kids. You have to go and rely on the parents, and half the parents in the world won't discipline their children. And uh, But just 14, he can discipline them, and that's the beautiful part of that. And he's established that dominance here. Uh, we've been here about a week and a few days, I believe. And uh, uh, the, it's, just, it's just a few of them. It's like a normal neighborhood. You got a few bad apples. And they see Joe walking up the one way of the sidewalk, and they turn around and go the other way. And uh, that happened to us last night coming back from the gym. And Joe was like, you see that, Dad? That's how I want this to continue to work, and it will, or I'll correct him. And I was like, good, good, good going, son. Good going. He's done told these security guards, I know you can't do anything. Uh, he's literally gave his phone number out and said, but I can't. Call me. Call me. I'll handle this. And uh, that's how you got to do it. You know, today you can't correct a kid, but a kid can correct another kid. And uh, uh, that's how to rock and roll there. So, uh, and it, it's not Joe trying to be a badass. It's, it's Joe. You'd have to understand Joe and meet him. Y'all know I can raise some hell and spit some ugly words out. The worst word I've heard heard my son ever say, even talking to friends, uh, has been hell, you know. And uh, it, that's generally when he gets so worked up, you know, on a, a bully or a bad delinquent teenager. He's like, I'm going to beat the hell out of you. That's your warning. No more. And... Uh, but so he's a good kid. He's got a good heart. And he, uh, boy, he sees a bigger kid messing with a smaller kid. He's all over that. And that gets snipped just like that. And I love my son for that. So anyway, I rambled on here big time. Uh, take what you see with us. Take what you think will work. And don't take what you think won't. And to you young trainers out there, um, a lot of you don't have a clue as to what uh, I do, and uh, I, no blaming to you. Uh, what you do is good, it's great, uh, but keep your minds on that, and maybe you see something we do that you'll like. Maybe I see something that you do that I like, uh, because boxing is a, a learning process. Uh, it's one sport you never stop learning. Uh, but most sports you never stop learning. And uh, so be kind to one another out there. Uh, up fighters, uplift other fighters. Uh, don't bring down. Uh, quickest way I see a, lo a loser as a boxer is when I see a kid saying, Oh, you, yeah, you ain't worth the heck at that. You're awful. You're bad. You know? Where I see a good, where I see a good fighter is a guy that's silent, and he goes around to the back door and talks to that other boxer and says, "Hey, let me give you some some, some suggestions here. Uh, let me help build you up. You know, maybe this will work for you and help you out. Those are always the winners. But the mouth chirpers, they, the boys don't really make it. They make good." gym boxers but they, they they're not winners so keep that in mind i've babbled enough and blessings to everyone remember jesus is knocking on that door make sure it's him in, the, in this spiritual wickedness today make sure it's him 
And when you when you know it is, open that door. You will be glad you did. And we will check you out later.